Are you all ready? Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for inviting me. My name is David Evans, and I've been suffering with bronchitis for a few weeks, so I don't normally sound like this. If I speak too quickly, please tell me to slow down. Okay. Are you all okay? Yeah? Great. Okay. Well, I'm from the University of Greenwich um, in the UK, and I'll just show you a little bit uh, where I'm from. That was me as a little baby boy, and I'm originally from Cardiff, um, which is the capital city of Wales, which is in the European Union. Okay, if you want to say it in Welsh, it's Cardiff, Prif Dinas Cymru, ar Undeb Europei. Okay, and I live in the Royal Borough of Greenwich, which is also in the European Union. Are you getting my point? Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> and I work at the University of Greenwich, and we have three campuses, one which is in the historic heart, oh, sorry, one in the historic heart of Greenwich, uh, called Maritime Greenwich. Nursing, midwifery and education is out on Avery Hill, that's where I'm based. And then we have another campus, which is halfway in Kent, um, in, in Medway. Um, so thanks very much to all of you at this university who have invited me here. And thanks to the Erasmus scheme of the European Union that's invited me. And that was Carl. He came over to Greenwich uh, I met him a few years ago, and then he signed up and did one of my online sexual health courses. So it's sexual health that I teach, and most of my courses are all online. So Carl did that, his first course in English. Um, and he passed amazingly well, and he's been doing fantastic work here ever since, and especially with a big national organization called Sinsoa. Uh, this is the campus that I'm based on, Avery Hill. So it's just on the outskirts of Greenwich. So part of London, but as you leave this, you go into Kent, which is Canterbury, Dover, and, um, and that's the building I'm in at the end there called Mary Seacole Building. You've all heard of Florence Nightingale, but not many people have heard of Mary Seacole. Just as famous, but she was a black Caribbean woman, and lots of people haven't been talking about her until quite recently. Mary Seacole. So she was in the Crimea with um, Florence Nightingale, but history is sidelined to a lot. This building, this is, our, I made it arty looking, this is um, our student centre, but it's built on um, what used to be called Roper Farm. So Thomas More University, Thomas More's daughter was Margaret Roper, and she owned the property that this building is now on. Okay, right, there's more, there's more to come. Thomas More himself. So my first degree is in theology, and I did that at the University of Kent in Canterbury, and there's a church there that I knew about because it had a famous bit of St. Thomas More in there. And um, I've been taking lots of photos. This one, this is at um, Chelsea Parish Church. Now, I only stopped and took these photos on Sunday. I was driving back from Cardiff after going to the rugby, and I got soaking wet in the rain, driving back to London, and I stopped at the church because there's Thomas More. And I thought, well, there must be something about him here. Well, the little garden outside is called Roper Garden, and it's where the Thomas More family lived. And this little bit of the chapel is the Thomas More Chapel. And during the Second World War, the church was bombed, and this was the only bit that still survived. But they've rebuilt the rest of the church exactly as it looked, even though this is all a reconstruction since World War II. And these are just some of the little artifacts around there. And that little kneeler thingy has got uh, Ma um, Margaret Roper's name on there and Roper's garden. Okay, so I thought I'd show you a bit of Thomas More history. <laughs> and in Canterbury, this is where his head is buried. So it's in a church called St. Dunstan's, and across the road from the church, there's still an ancient house, which is for old people now, and that's called Roper House. So that's where Margaret Roper lived in that house. And the church is St. Dunstan's. And in 1932, in the, um, the Roper crypt underground, they found a head, and they believe that to be St. Thomas's head. So that's buried there in Canterbury, but nobody knows where his body's buried. Okay. His head was stuck on the Tower of London, stuck on Tower Bridge for a month as a warning to the people from Henry VIII. And then um, uh, Margaret Roper had it uh, taken away. I'll just show you now a few pictures of Greenwich. This is going to slide through uh, from our campus, which used to be the, um, the old Royal Naval College. It's a very famous building built by the same man that built St. Paul's Cathedral. 
So it's been around for a long time, but it's only been part of our university um, for the last few years. Greenwich became a university in 1992, when lots of polytechnics then became universities. But we've had historical um, colleges and schools for well over 100 years now. So all of these, like with your own university, lots of them have come together to form what's now called the University of Greenwich. Um, we have lots of different programs in nursing. So we have um, adult nursing, pediatrics, uh, mental health and learning disabilities. We have midwifery as well. And um, so I teach on the sexual health courses. Lots of nurses in England, as opposed to Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, lots of nurses used to do a diploma, a three-year diploma. And now if they want to top up to a bachelor degree, they do 120 credits more. So we have a, a top-up degree in sexual health, we have a master's degree in sexual health, and we've got about six doctoral students in sexual health. Most of them are doing PhDs, but some, like myself, are doing Doctor of Education and EdD. Um, this is our latest building. It's where we've got the library, all the computing facilities, um, a really nice building there. So we, we have um, uh, lots of different ways in which nurses can progress, and even when they're doing master's degrees, we have master of clinical, uh, um, clinical practice as well. More views of the campus. Um, with sexual health, th th there have been courses at the university for a long time, since the 1990s, main, um, mainly in contraception, fertility, and um, sexual infections. And I used to work for the Royal College of Nursing, and I designed um, a distance learning course, which has become the biggest course in the UK now. It's the one that Carl did. Over 3,000 nurses have done it. It was distance learning at first. Now it's all online learning. Okay. So lots of nurses, if they don't work in sexual health services, they could be general practice nurses or orthopedic nurses, intensive care, and they say, well, look, there are issues about sexual health that we need to talk about, but there were no courses for them. So this course is meant to be a, a general course in sexual health for anyone that wants to learn more um, about it. Um, so lots of people do that course, and like Carl, um, many people will just sign up and say, I just want to do this one course. But hopefully they enjoy it, and they say, I'd like to stay on, and they do more. And some will go on and do um, the full top-up bachelor degree, some men go on and do master's degree, and some go on and do doctorates. So it really is a springboard for lots of people to start doing that. And it's uh, really changing practice as well, because lots of nurses still find it difficult to talk about sex with, with, with their clients. Um, but this is one of the ways in which it's encouraging them. And I was saying to Cindy and Wendy, last week I was teaching 305 first-year students and teaching them about sex and uh, uh, sexual health. It's a shock to many of them for the first time. <laughs> But I think it's amazing that they're doing that in their first year because when I started nursing at the age of 17, I did orthopedics and there was nothing, no mention at all about any of it. So the very fact that they're getting a real high profile of this now within their first six months is uh, absolutely spectacular. This is the Medway campus, the one that's down in Kent. And it's a huge university because this is the old historical bit but now there are new bits of university. So there's University of Greenwich, University of Kent, and Christ Church Canterbury University, all on one big campus. Um, with some of the students, when they get the sexual health stuff in their first year, it can so inspire them that by the time they get to the third year to do their research dissertation, lots of them choose to do it on different aspects of sexual health. And um, lots of them go to conferences, they'll speak at conferences, they're writing for publications. So it's really been a, a very big change uh, to see all of that happening. Okay, you can see I'm still flashing through some of the pictures of the university here. Um, some of the stuff about myself, and so I started nursing at the age of 17. Back in those days, uh, you could do orthopedics or ophthalmology at 17, whereas general nursing was 18. So lots of us did two years orthopedics, and then we did our general nursing. And then I took, um, I took a 10-year break out of nursing, and I spent seven years studying to become a Roman Catholic priest. Then I was ordained as a priest, and I worked in a parish, in, in parishes, 
And after three years, I packed my bags and I walked away. Go on. Uh, the, the local church. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yes, I, I, I didn't have a nice time. So I, I packed my bag. Uh, so after ten years, I packed my bags and walked away. And I went back to nursing, and that was in 1989. And I went to work on an HIV ward in St. Mary's in Paddington in London. And that was in the really bad old days of the 1980s, where lots of people were dying from AIDS-defining illnesses. So we'd have maybe six deaths a week. You know, it was, it, it was a really big turnover. And then soon after that, I got my first teaching post. That was in 1990. And I've been teaching ever since 1990. Yes, yeah, so student nurse, 22, <laughs> Canterbury, a little bit later. <coughs> <coughs> And now, okay? <laughs> okay, but the common... Th <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. The, yeah, I've got some thanks. Thank you. The common... Oh, uh, yes, these are the love of my life, my little baby boys. Um, the common theme throughout my life, really, has been studying or for, for all but a four years since leaving school, I've been in some sort of education, so working right the way through. And when I left school, I only had two um, O-levels, we used to call them, the, the two basic uh, um, exams at age of 16, so not even enough to start nursing. So I had to sit entrance tests to get into nursing, and then in September I became professor. So to go from not enough qualifications to do nursing to this is a big jump. This is in 2004. Um, I was made a National Teaching Fellow, which is the highest achievement for excellence in teaching in the UK. There's only about 700 of us across the whole of the UK. So that was a, a really, really prestigious for that to happen. And then in uh, two years ago, Her Majesty the Queen appointed me as an OBE, an officer of the uh, Excellent Order of the British Empire, for services to nursing and sexual health education. And that's Prince Charles awarding. And that's my husband sitting at the back there. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Prince Charles, he, I think he's a bit shorter than me, but he, st he stands up on a platform. And um, he, he just said to me, because as, as you walk out, the big speaker says what, who you are. So it says, Dr. David Evans, uh, University of Greenwich, for services to nursing and sexual health education. And Prince Charles said to me, um, how did you get into sexual health? And he sort of jumped on me. And I said, to, well, actually, Your Royal Highness, I said it started when I was a Roman Catholic priest. Get away with you, he said. He was just so animated. He was spectacular. Here's the final picture now. Um, our graduation last year. So these are some of the bachelor students, including a soldier. Um, he's a nurse in the army. So we, we've had quite a lot of them from the army who are nurses who come to us to do their bachelor degree in sexual health. And uh, this person at the end, Joanne Ferrugia, is from Malta. So she did her PhD with us. She was looking at sexuality um, and relationship education, but for parents in Malta. So she did it all by Skype. So I was her supervisor, and we just had regular Skype meetings. Um, but she did her PhD in four years. Um, oh, this other person, Alison Hadley, she's got quite an international reputation for working on teenage pregnancy. So she used to work with the government when it was Labour government, and she was in charge of what was called the Teenage Pregnancy Strategy. And she advises the World Health Organization, and I managed to nominate her for an honorary doctorate. Um, for all the work she's done around teenage pregnancy in the UK and abroad. So that's the final picture then of our graduation from last year. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah with, with the bachelor students, they wear the black gowns and a hood and the hat, 
master's students would have different, different cut sleeves on theirs, and their hoods are slightly different. But then every university has different color robes for doctors. So this is Greenwich. If it was the University of London, it's red, usually red with blue or something. So every university has got different colors. Um, but even the hats, I, I think, because Henry VIII was born at Greenwich, so they wanted it to look a bit like Henry VIII, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs>